SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. What? Are you serious? A game that I used to play all the time as a kid is now considered a cult classic and is randomly being remade? Literally, I had this game back on the original Xbox, and you're telling me two whole console generations later, they remade it for the Xbox One? Jeez, that's incredible. I must be imagining things because this is way too good to be true. Well, hold your horses there, because I don't know what to make of all these reviews from this game. It seemed like every big game company was unanimously giving this game a bad review, with GameSpot even giving it a 2 out of 10. That's a lower score than what they gave Bubsy 3D, which is considered one of the worst games of all time. But, on the other hand, the people watching the reviews universally disagreed with every reviewer saying that the game was good and praising the game. And this was even more noticeable with the like to dislike ratio on these videos showing an incredible amount of dislikes. So what is the deal with this game? Surely all of the fans weren't just blinded by nostalgia when disliking the reviews, and surely all these different big game reviewers weren't just blindly hating the game. So let's get to the bottom of this. From a person who loved the classic episodes of Spongebob when I was a kid, and someone who loved the original battle from Bikini Bottom. Okay, let's start off with the biggest improvement from the original the graphics. There is a huge difference on how the visuals look in this remaster. The first thing that stood out to me is the colors. There is a lot more contrast and saturation this time around. I couldn't even believe how desaturated the original looked when comparing the two. Now this game looks a lot closer to how the show looked. Maybe a bit too bright in certain occasions. You might need some sunglasses to play at times, but overall a very good improvement. Also, now there is a lot more detail in the world, from adding the grass and jellyfish fields to the extra details in the background. This game looks really good now. Like it's no 4K, hyper-realistic, millions of triangles game, but that's not what it's going for. It's a stylized game based off a 2D cartoon, and it does that very well. Combines all of that with a new lighting system, and the TV show is really brought to life. That being said though, I do feel they could have added some extra details to the backgrounds in certain levels. Like there is a clear end of the level in places like jellyfish fields where the grass abruptly ends and it just turns to sand. I get it, you're at the bottom of the sea where it is sand, but fading out the grass and adding other details in the background would have made it feel less barren and jarring. Because the hub world does this very well by having a ton of detail for the other worlds that you're going to explore. Another thing I liked is the new animations that were added. All of the characters are a lot more expressive this time around. And look, when Spongebob's just waiting around, he does the memes! And hey, it's even the chicken one! It's awesome! So weird to see this in a 3D game though, not gonna lie. And just the characters' movesets are more polished even. For example, Spongebob's rainbows and bubbles are a lot more noticeable on his attacks, and he even stretches out when he jumps now. It's a few minor things, but small details like this add up throughout the game. However, I can't praise all these graphical upgrades without mentioning some of the performance issues. I just don't even get why these issues are even a thing. For example, some of the pop-in is really bad. Look how noticeable this is, I'm not even trying to exaggerate here. I think the worst example of this is in Jellyfish Fields during the intro. And it's even worse on the Switch, I mean just watch this comparison. Loading is kind of a pain too, and this game isn't even a super detailed game, so these issues don't even really make sense to me. And this loading is probably even worse on the Switch, I would imagine. Also, there are some weird glitches I've seen in this as well. Literally, this happened during the intro of the game. Twice for that matter. So let's just say that wasn't the greatest first impression of this remake. And certain things almost just seem unfinished at times. Like in this part, when you clear out all the enemies, the floor just disappears under you and you go to the next level. When in the original game, it would actually break into pieces. And then there's these lines that are painted on the ground to show the edge of the level, and they place them too high, they're not even on the ground, they're floating right above it. So you think that these are minor points, but they just really showcase the lack of polish throughout the game. And I could tell the developers cared about this game from all the little details and references, but it really just feels like this game was rushed in many cases. These are some issues that really should have been ironed out before launch. Anyways, I've talked about the visuals enough, so let's move on to another aspect of the game. How about the gameplay part of the game? That seems to be an important thing to talk about. 
This game is your typical Banjo-Kazooie slash Mario 64 type game, so if you're a fan of those games, you'll be right at home here. You gotta collect spatulas this time around to open up different locations in Bikini Bottom. And there's other collectibles too, such as Patrick Socks and Shiny Objects. Yep, that's what they're actually called. Then to go along with the collecting, there's the platforming elements, and they are the highlight of the gameplay for me. Whether it be platforming across certain objects or trying to climb up mountains and stuff, it's for the most part pretty fun 3D platforming. And then there's these slide levels that are awesome too. Um, yeah, not much to say about that. You just go down a slide and it's fun. SpongeBob also slides on his tongue. The part of the gameplay I wasn't so fond of was the combat. If you would even call it combat. Really, the extent of the combat is you see an enemy, walk up to that enemy, and press X. Now he's dead. Sure, it's not always this simple. Sometimes you need to hit him twice. Other times you need to hit him by pressing Y. Or even jump, then press B. Whoa! But my point is, fighting these robots got really boring for me. Fighting the bosses, however, were really fun. They're a bunch of big robot versions of Spongebob characters. And the best part, you got that fish news guy from the show as a commentator for the match. And these bosses would allow you to switch characters as you progress in the fight, which always changed how you approach the boss. Oh yeah, I probably should have mentioned there are different playable characters in this game. You can play as three characters in fact. Spongebob, Patrick, and Sandy. You always have the chance to play as Spongebob, but you can either swap out for Sandy or Patrick depending on which world you're in. In some locations you have access to Patrick, and in others you have access to Sandy. But you never have access to both in the same world. And I found these to be a nice change in gameplay style. Spongebob does have the most moves, but I also like Sandy with her lasso shenanigans and her Texan accent. I do wish the characters could move faster. This is kind of a complaint with the movement in the game. They don't really have any weight or momentum in the characters, such as games like Mario Odyssey or Donkey Kong Country. So I do wish they tweaked the characters' controls to make them a bit more interesting to play as. Like, it does work fine, but it can be just boring at times when walking throughout the worlds. Also, another quality of life thing that would have been nice to have was to add maps in this game. Like, you can warp to the different objectives in the game, just like the original, but at times it would be nice to know where your character is in each land, and it would have been such a simple thing to add. All in all, sure, the gameplay isn't winning any awards, it's pretty standard for an early 2000s platformer, but it's not bad by any means, and I definitely still enjoyed it. So the last area I want to talk about is one of the more subtle aspects of this game, but it's definitely one of my favorite parts in it, and that's the game's charm. Like I stated, while I think some of the elements of this game were definitely rushed, you could tell that the developers cared about various little things in the game. For starters, there are various references to different episodes throughout the game, and a lot of people would just breeze by it if they weren't familiar with a certain episode. My favorite one being the bust that arrives when you get to the candy in the vending machine in Rock Bottom. And the dialogue is pretty well a perfect translation as to what it was from the show, with actually a lot of funny jokes in there. Do I look like I'm okay? Well, your nose does look pretty big. I mean, bigger than usual because it's usually pretty big. And you look clammy. And oh my gosh, you're bald! And each of the characters act exactly how you would expect. At the end of the day, you are exploring the most thorough version of Bikini Bottom that's ever been in a video game. This game has most of the locations that were in the show from the classic episodes. And to see all of these locations connected in one big SpongeBob world, it is truly unique and great to explore. And because of all of this, I think the game is really tailored towards fans of the show. So going back to the original question of why do a lot of big game companies dislike this game when the users like it, well it could be a few different things, but maybe the reviewers just weren't all that big fans of the show to begin with. And if you take away all the references and subtle details, as well as not being familiar with the type of humor or characters, and not really knowing where all the locations come from, you're left with an alright platformer from the early 2000s. And Considering the hype that everyone was talking about for this game, and for it to be chosen out of all the other games to be remade, I can see why some people at big gaming companies expected a lot more and didn't like this game that much. Why GameSpot ranked it worse than Bubsy 3D is still a mystery to me, but that's besides the point. So for that reason, if you're really not a fan of Spongebob, it'll probably just be a mediocre experience for you in this day and age. Keep in mind, it's not 2003 anymore. We've had Mario Galaxy, A Hat in Time, Sonic Generations, and Mario Odyssey, which were all great platformers. And then there's this game, which just kind of does what it does. If you are a fan of the show, especially the earlier episodes, I think you will definitely enjoy this game more. 
and it's honestly a fun experience at that point. Nothing too groundbreaking, but I still enjoyed my time throughout the entire game. Plus it's only like $30, so not a bad deal for what you get. The collector's editions, I can't speak for because they're a bit overpriced. Don't get them in fact, but the base game is pretty reasonable. Oh yeah, there's like a new multiplayer mode now. A mode so forgettable that I forgot to talk about it. And I, uh, yep, that's my opinion on that mode. The rest of the game I enjoyed.